I'm a biomedical engineer. Let's talk about some ingredients in skincare that I think are a scam. And this has to do with the fact that I work with these ingredients all the time in research on the bench top. So I see through the marketing that they are getting you with. The first one is collagen. So saying like a collagen serum, a collagen under eye mask, a collagen blah, blah, blah. Like, no, it can't get through the skin. It's way too big to do anything. It's gonna be a nice humectant, a great moisturizing, water attracting ingredient. But other than that, it's not gonna actually be stimulating collagen production underneath the skin because it's way too big to get through the skin. Now, something that may work that is different is if you were to use a smaller molecule something synthetic bioengineered that targets the pathways of collagen synthesis so something like a palmitoyl tripeptide one that is anchored with a palmitoyl 16 carbon group that is going to sink down into the skin that is small enough to get through the skin that's probably going to work better than something like a collagen molecule that is way too big that can't get through the skin now it's the same issue for the ingredient pdrn pdrn is a great idea in theory taking chopped up dna little bases and having having them interact with the skin. Now, the idea is that it interacts with an adenosine receptor, which is in the pathway for reactive oxygen species mediated aging and damage and cellular damage. So it is something that can help hypothetically, right? But the molecules, the chopped up fragments of DNA are way too big to get through the skin. Now I've seen people say, oh, well I microneedled it and I had great results. I don't know if there's enough information out there yet for people to reliably get PDRN microneedling treatments and have it give a consistent outcome every single time. Like, I don't know if we know that yet, but I'm just saying if you have your Metacube serum, it's not exactly doing what you think it's doing because the PDRN itself can't get beneath the skin because it's too big. And finally, now something that's too small that I don't think companies actually know how to work with are exosomes. Anytime I see an exosome serum or an exosome thing, I always am a little wary of that. I'm studying exosomes right now in research in the lab and we have to really delicately take care of them. Like they live in the minus 80 degree Celsius freezer and they have to also be tested because they have specific proteins on the outside of them. So they're basically little nanometer sized vesicles, like 100 nanometers, and they contain contents that come from cells, cell signaling. I describe it as kind of emails that cells send to each other. So we know how to measure the contents of the exosomes and stuff, but we don't exactly know what a single exosome is saying, but it's cell communication. And you have to have specific proteins on the outside of the exosome for it to be classified as an exosome. You have to do like a little bench top test to, to identify your exosomes from just other vesicles. This video is getting pretty long, but let me know if you want me to talk about any other trendy ingredients.